Shalom, dear friends, it's wonderful to be with you. We are in the hills of Jerusalem today, and the topic today is going to be very special. We are going to speak about the heart of Israel. Israel has a big heart, and we have a doctor today who is going to speak a bit about it. Not about the heart bump bump, but like <laughs> generosity. And thank you, Sharon, to come. This is Dr. Sharon Scholl, and she's working with an organization which is a humanitarian organization, which is called Natan. And uh, you are going to see what's happening in Israel and outside of Israel, but from the people of Israel. Um, but today, first of all, I want to give you some amazing news because Israel is providing tons of medical supply and clothes and food and six mules for Syria. And this is the IDF spokesman who was saying yesterday that the primary goal of this operation was to reach as many as possible Syrian uh, people without obviously violating the Israel carefully crafted policy of non-intervention -interve in the Syrian civil war. But there is already 110 um, operation who's been done of various kinds and this this has been conducted since the operation who started uh, last August. So it's just amazing and there was also a recipient of this aid, a man from Syria who was saying the people of Syria want peace with, with Israel. To any Syrians that think that Israel is our enemy, you are wrong. And this is somebody who's been helped and they can see the humanity of Israel. And this is what I love. One of the things that is said in, in Israel a lot and, and that I've learned, I've learned some good things in this land, that everybody is a whole world, is an anti-universe. And I think you are going to speak to us. Uh, and thank you again for coming, uh, Sharon. Thanks. And uh, tell us a bit what is Natan, how you, how you started to be with them and where you've been. And after we show like a short clip for the people to see uh, how is the organization. Um, I am a mother of five. Mm -hmm. I live in the north of Israel near uh, Nazareth in a small settlement called Alona Galil. Um, I'm a family physician. I work in, uh, in a kibbutz in the north, Kibbutz Mizra. And um, actually since 2010, I take part and I'm responsible for the medical aid in the Natan organization. Um, Natan is an NGO that uh, works for, um, uh, for many years in the, it's in the memory of uh, A.B. Natan, which was, uh, which was a very famous Israeli peace fighter. Mm -hmm. And um, actually Natan, the world means uh, to give in Hebrew. So, um, yeah. Um, I took part in a few projects. Uh, we usually give help in uh, areas of disaster like earthquakes and other disasters. Um, I took part in a project in uh, Haiti, Nepal, the Philippines and uh, Serbia. So it's, it's wonderful and we are going to see this, uh, this short video and you are going to see the project has been always out of Israel, but from Israel. Let us watch that. The late A.B. Natan's life story is the inspiration for the non-governmental organization, Natan. The desire to do for our fellow human beings, to act and enable real change in places that suffer from natural disasters or tragedies caused by humans. In the last 12 years, the nonprofit has acted in each of the major disasters that occurred around the world while expressing its values and unique approach to disaster relief. Sri Lanka was Natan's first major activity, forging its agenda, using volunteers exclusively. During our work there, a community center was built 120,000 tons of food were distributed. Medical and emotional aid was given to the victims of the devastation caused by the tsunami. In Georgia, following the internal displacement of thousands of citizens, we expressed the value of collaborative work with other organizations, harnessing the abilities of the local population. 
Natan volunteers include physicians, nurses, social workers, and educators, sharing their experience and capabilities with local people, and training the trainers. In Haiti, Natan's capability for rapid deployment was needed after the earthquake. Natan was on the ground 72 hours after the disaster hit. Local culture, language, and customs dictate the relief plan. Natan adapts its activity to the population's needs and cultural traditions and doesn't force its programs on the population. Natan's work emphasizes a holistic approach, incorporating medical, psychosocial, and community activities, from life-saving medical relief to the creation of a rural training center for children, teaching art, all according to the needs of the local community. Natan reached isolated villages in the foothills of the Himalayas. Distances and altitude did not deter us. You live here? My, my house is a Gorka, but I live here. Uh, what happened to your house in Gorka? So hard. Hard? House is all falling down. Our teams reach the victims wherever they are. Natan understands that long-term activities are crucial in rebuilding a community hit by disaster. This is why we train local teams, including teachers and community workers, in methods of replenishing a community. Our goal is to provide them materials and tools so they could go to their community and raise awareness by using those tools what we provide here. Wasn't it amazing to see all these Israelis going out of the country and helping when there is disaster? Now, Sharon, you've been yourself over there, so tell us a bit how it was for you, because you meet also different cultures, so you have to adapt to what's happening over there and how Nathan is, is, is working. It's, it's usual, it's always a very um, unique experience and very special experience to meet people in their very um, um, hard, hard situation. Mm -hmm. um, but it's very good and it, it's a very good feeling and it, it's, uh, it's something that I thank every day that I'm able and I can help. And, and it's, a, it's a very good and very um, important opportunity for me to do that. So I'm very happy for that. So when is like that you drop everything in your in your land here and and you go and for how long do you go yeah actually actually we are all volunteers in Natan no one works for uh, no one gets paid for that and when i when i uh, when we have a project and we are we decide that we go on that project usually we get there in, a, in around 48 hours so we have to leave everything i take a vacation and actually we don't get uh, also also the the time that we spend there is the, this is the vacation time in uh, uh, from from work and um, we try to do it as quick as possible to give this help so we leave everything we say bye to the children and we go I know it's a, big, it's a big thing so for example when you went to Haiti so how long did you stay over there Usually, um, I, I stayed for three weeks. Okay. For three weeks, it's pretty long time when you have families and you yes. have a job that you have to do. But, but this is the minimum time that you can you, you should be there in order to help, in order to to get into the things and and time to help. So that's what we usually ask the people, the delegations uh, from Natan. Natan is a multidisciplinary uh, organization. That means that we give. Um, help, we have experts in a few fields. Um, the first is the medical help that we give. We give uh, medical help, it's a primary care. 
That means that we get to the place and we start working uh, as soon as we get there and we don't have big hospitals, we cannot do very um, um, Operation or no, surgery we do or operations. Like yeah, mm -hmm. we do we do primary care, mm -hmm. but we can do it from the minute that we get there. And in the meantime, so it means like antibiotics or this kind of thing, which is like yes. seems very simple for us, but for them it could be something like a life saving. Yes, also infectious disease and sometimes uh, burns. It depends on what. Sometimes even fractures, but. Um, we, we give the, the first help at the place as needed. And then um, we have also assessment of experts who come from the psychosocial field, uh, social workers and psychologists. We always come together, whatever we do. We have um, um, experts from both fields and usually we have logistics men who, who deals with all the logistics. And sometimes we also have uh, educational team. Usually they come later. But, uh, but this is, um, the delegations come usually for three weeks and then we change delegations so we can stay for a long time, for a few months. Mm -hmm. So for example, when you, have, when you say that you have people who come with a psychologically, I mean for helping uh, psychologically, you do it to the people that you are coming in, in the country. But I was reading and I know uh, when you have volunteers, your volunteers need also some help sometimes because suddenly they are facing things that are not really normal. Yes. So uh, you do also work? Sometimes you do, you see very difficult things and it's hard to, to, um, to deal with yourself. But our social workers, they're experts in, uh, in trauma care. Israel is very famous for mm -hmm. trauma care, unfortunately. Uh, so. The social workers and the psychologists, they they work first of all with the re with um, with the people who need who need the help. Usually, they they don't treat them. Sometimes they treat them uh, directly, and usually they also have training for the trainers. Mm -hmm. That means that local people can can have the. Um, to, can learn the methods how to help their own people but also what they do is very important is they take care of our teams that means that we have usually i can say that usually we have every evening we have a meeting and we sit together and we refresh and talk about what we saw today and we we, we speak about the hard things so we have like a sharing between us of what we have gone through and we have um an expert mm -hmm. <laughs> help so. to be able to, okay this is very good when when you went also to syria this was like a very special thing because you were looking after people who were like in transit we were in serbia um, serbia mm -hmm. yeah in serbia and uh, we took care of the refugees mainly from syria some of them from Asga afghanistan um, actually it was really a transit but before we went, we thought that this is, um, we cannot sit and not do anything when we have our neighbors uh, suffering. And we thought, what, what could we do in this situation? And then we contacted um, um, Serbia and we understood that there is a, uh, a camp there for the, a transit camp. But people who go there, they come by foot, they come on the whole way from Afghanistan and from Syria and by the sea uh, through Greece. And they walk from Macedonia uh, to, uh, to uh, Serbia. Actually, they want to get to Europe. And this was a place where we could uh, open a clinic just on the way. And when they went through, we had a lot of people coming in and we took care of many uh, cases. Some of them were severe, some of them are uh, easier. And um, it was uh, a good opportunity to, to meet the people, to help them. And also for us, a good opportunity to have, um, the, this was the first time that we could do an operation where we work Arabs, Jews, uh, Christians, um, Muslims, and, and Jews together in order to from help Israel. From, from Israel. From Israel. Israeli, yeah. So you were like an Israeli doctor and you told me there was... Uh, yes, yes. I was in, in our clinic. We had a Muslim doctor, a Christian doctor and Jew and Jewish. And I was there. And, um, and the social worker also, one of them always was uh, um, Jewish and the other was Arab. And we lived together and we, um, we helped together. I believe that when that peace we do not in talks mm -hmm. 
Yes, you are making it. We are we're making doing it. it. We're, we're doing something doing good it. together. Very we good. believe in what we are doing. And this was a, um, a very good opportunity for us to learn that and to, to start doing it together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we still do it now in, uh, um, in Greece. Actually, we continue the same work with the refugees in Greece now. Yes, yeah, so t tell us a bit, because this is your newest mm -hmm. uh, project that you are doing. Um, maybe just before we speak about it, we are just showing you again a clip, and you can see they built, there was nothing, there was nothing at all. They built this school, and you can see this one big family, and there is a lot of interaction. Just watch that. The One Happy Family Campus, created by Natan, with our local partner Swiss Cross Help, started operations in April 2017 on six acres of private land. An empty warehouse on a hilltop was completely refurbished and renovated by our volunteers, working together with refugees, residents of two nearby refugee camps. The compound includes a community center, a restaurant, and the education center built out of two used shipping containers. I was an Afghanistan engineer. I live in Karatape, uh, but uh, and also I am teacher in Happy Family uh, School. But I like to be. Uh, I like uh, to. Be, I like teach every uh, human, and I like to be, uh, every every human to be knowledge. Isn't it amazing to see that thinking that there was nothing at all? And, and the refugees needed something. And you know, when you are a refugee, I haven't been a refugee, but I, sometimes reading articles, you start to feed the mood. And you, like I was a nurse before, so sometimes there are empathy and you, you can feel you need to have dignity. You need to have some self-respect. And, and this school is just amazing for the people to be able to do something. Because if you are in a very refugee camp, doing nothing all day long, is just terrible. So to see this life there, I think, is, is wonderful. So tell us maybe a, a bit of how, how it's working again, because it's not from Greece, but it's in Greece, in the island, which is very close to Turkey, mm -hmm. I saw on the map. I didn't know where was this, uh, uh, this, this island is Lesbos, isn't it? Lesbos, Lesbos yeah. Usually when Natan comes to an area, also to Lesbos, uh, we cannot work up by ourselves. It's, um, um, what we do is we come and we look for the local leadership. Mm -hmm. And when we, when we find the local leadership, we ask them what they need, what are their needs, how do they want to do it, what are their values, what do they, um, what do they wish for the children. And, and if we have a local leadership that we can uh, join and work together, then we can start work in a place. And that would happen also in uh, Lesbos. We have um, uh, also Greek and also from the refugees, um, people who want to, who, to take the responsibility to raise it. And then we come and we can help them with, uh, with our experts and with our uh, teams. So what happens in Lesbos is that the, we opened together, uh, we work not, we don't open for the refugees a school. We work with the refugees, and this is the main thing. So the teachers in the school are refugees. They work for themselves. They, they choose what to teach. They, they, they can, they can uh, choose what are their... Um, uh, emphasis, so, emphasis. Yeah, what, what they want to put emphasis on, what they want to teach. If they think that the history of Afghanistan is important for these children from six years to 12 years old, if they need to study history of Afghanistan now, so they will teach. And the teachers are uh, for the teachers from their native lands. Mm -hmm. So we have Afghan teacher, we have uh, we have Syrian teachers, uh, we also have a group of um, uh, children from Congo uh, who are refugees there, and they and they study in uh, in French. So the the um, the classes are, the teachers are local, of course, the children are local. The community center is operated by local. Uh, they have a tailor, they, ha they watch cinema, but whatever, they, they, they have um, a kitchen where they serve uh, food 
every day and they prepare the food. So actually it's a place, it's, it's like a real community center. That means that it, it works by the people, for the people. But this is wonderful because it's you coming as Israeli, seeing the needs, but like with a lot of respect, saying, okay, look, this is what I've learned also in this country. It's like, you know, if there is a disparate situation, we look at how it is, and now we go out, we find a way out. And, and that for you to bring this kind of uh, tool also, because I think it's a tool and it's a way of, of thinking that no, life can be desperate sometimes, but you can go out of where you are. If this door is closed, let us open another door. Let us find opportunities. You have potential in you, you have dignity. And uh, this, is, this is just wonderful to see that. And, when I, I like also, like you, I'm sure you know, tikkun, tikkun olam is, is something that you have so strong in your, in your culture, which means like to repair the world. And this is what's happening here in Israel, is like Israelis who are Jewish and Christian and Muslim coming there. Do you know for how long it will work? The it is still working. Also, um, our help is we have uh, people also Israelis, uh, young Israelis and um, Israelis, Arabs and Jews are working together. They're from a youth movement. They are graduates. Oh, they are yeah. graduates of youth movements, and so from from the Arab and the uh, the Jewish, uh, from an Arab and a Jewish uh, youth movement, and they work together and they help the local people to operate mm -hmm. the, um, the this project. And this project is it's very special, it's very unique. That's why it has a lot of attention from the Greeks and from, um, and from the other uh, organizations who come to see how it works, because it works by the people. And this is the main thing. And um, right now we have this school for children working. Um, so the needs now are for um, uh, the grown-ups. They, they come from, they have professions and they want to, to get involved in, the, in Greek and they want to, to build their lives back in, in Greek and they asked to learn uh, English and to learn Greek and that's why now we are trying to operate um, uh, an adult school that would work and for that we need help also because all this project is actually by donations. Mm -hmm. Um, so we are so wonderful. Yeah. You see, if you want to help, maybe you can be in touch with Nathan, and you go on the Facebook, and you go on the website, and you can contact them. And uh, we never know. You know, it's, life is an adventure, and you started, and we don't know what you know what can happen. And uh, from Sharon, thank you again for coming thank you very much. from all the way to uh, from uh, Nazareth. And uh, from Sharon and me, bye and see you next week. So today we are looking at the third species of the seven species. Do you remember Shevat uh, Aminim? And so the third one is Gefen, which is wine. Okay. Now, do you know who was the first one who was making wine in the Bible? It was Noah. And you can see it in Genesis 9.20. And he said that he was a man of uh, the soil, Adama, and he planted a vineyard. So vineyard there is Kerem. So we can look at some wine who are made, and they are all made here in the land. So this is the first one, which is uh, the King David, and is a sweet wine. And is what they use usually for the Kiddush. This is for Shabbat. When they do the blessing for Shabbat, they will use this wine and they will, the, the father will do the blessing and they will put it in the cup and pass it to everybody. And so this is a sweet wine. So it's called Matok, sweet, and is red. So it's Adam and wine is Yain. Okay. So this is another one and is uh, Herman. And Herman is, uh, so let us read, what is it? Yain, so is wine. Adam is red and Yavesh. So Yavesh is a dry wine. And this one is from the Golan. And the Golan is in the north of Israel, close to the Syrian border. Okay. We have another one here and it's called Yain Adam. So again, a red wine. And Yavesh is dry 
and this one comes from uh, from the Galil. So the Galil is around the Sea of Galilee. Okay, and there is another one here, which is uh, let us read again is Yain, so wine, Adam red, Chetzi Yavesh. So it means semi-dry, so it's like again sweet. You can use it as, again also for Kiddush, for when you, when you have bread and wine. And uh, oh yeah, I wanted to show you something which is very interesting. On this thing, on, on the top, you can see uh, the spies and carrying the, the grape. So the name in, uh, in Hebrew is Anavim. And you can see how big was it. They, they just say in it Anavim Echad. So it was only one cluster, uh, cluster of a grape and it was big. They were taking it with the pool. So they had, a, it was working good. And this is the last wine and is, is white. So let us read Yain Lavan. Lavan is white and Chetzi Yavesh. So again, is a, is a dry, uh, semi-dry, semi-dry wine. Okay. So today we look at many names. We look at the species, which is Gefen, is the vine. We look at Noah with the vineyard, which is Kerem. We look at different colors, red, Adam. We look at white, Lavan. We look also Matok, which is a sweet wine. We look at Yavesh, which is a dry wine. And we look at this one, which is the semi-dry, which is Chetzi Yavesh. And this is all that we've learned today. And see you next week. Bye. Thank you again, Sharon, for coming and speaking about Nathan. This is just wonderful. And we will see you next week. If you want to know more about Nathan, just go on their website. And uh, don't forget that watching this program, you see what's happening here in Israel with the people and with the land. See you. Bye.